Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today, I'm sitting down with Leandro Vallejos, who is the founder and CEO of Pearl Tech Incorporated. Um, Leandro, I'm so excited to have you here and kind of dive in, talk a little bit about your business, talk about kind of your journey into entrepreneurship and, and all that fun stuff. Um, but uh, why don't we just start with a little bit of background? You know, if you would kind of give us the I'll say the the ten thousand foot view, kind of the just high level view of kind of who you are. Like, what what's a little bit of your background, and tell us a little bit about Pearl Tech. Yeah, so I guess to start off with some um, with some of my background, I um, I really got into the tech world. I really started uh, uh, like getting fascinated by it when I was uh, sixteen. I um, when I was turned seventeen, I wrote a senior project uh, predicting the future of humanity, inspired by uh, different physicists, uh, futurists, all of that. And um, I jumped into uh, the financial market. Um, I also learned to uh, program data science. Uh, I'm a software engineer myself. And uh, I also wrote, uh, used my thesis to uh, essentially make uh, investments, which um, uh, the thesis ended up working out uh, great. Um, and then about two years ago, uh, I jumped into the startup world. Uh, once I jumped into the startup world, the first company that I started was this company called Vibes. Uh, it was a social startup. And then it ended up merging with another company called Maple. And then after that, after I left Maple, I joined, uh, excuse me, I started Pearl. And um, it just went through a pivot and now it's a, uh, a hedge fund. Excellent. So what was the original iteration? If it just went through a pivot, um, maybe take us through kind of what that that looks like. Yeah, so uh, originally when it started out, it was another social app, uh, but it was focused on uh, dating specifically. And then so, pivoted to hedge fund. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So tell me, tell me more about that. Like what, what led to the, to, I guess on the outside looking in, that seems like a very drastic pivot. Uh, yes, maybe yeah. not, but uh, maybe give me some context on what, what kind of caused the pivot and, and maybe a little bit deeper on, on what the business does today. Yeah. So uh, essentially the, uh, the, the cause for the pivot was uh, I was working on the, uh, uh, on uh, the, the previous Pearl for about a, a year. Um, we were getting some users in, we were getting some, some people in, but, um, after a bit of time, I realized, okay, um, I'm not sure if I want to continue working on this specific thing, um, for the next, like, uh, uh, two to three years. Uh, so I was like, okay, um, I'm still really passionate about the social aspect, but I feel like if I'm consistently having to, uh, fundraise since it takes, um, a bit of time to, um, to really develop that product. And, um, the, the way that I thought about it was like, even if we bring users, what's the retention like, um, because if you bring in 10,000 users, uh, 50,000 users, it doesn't matter if they're not going to stay. So um, continuously fundraising for that, I felt like it would have taken a long time. So my idea was, okay, I'll go into financial markets. Um, I'm really good at it. I have 31% uh, annualized returns over uh, many, many years. Um, and um, we may potentially get into private equity and then I'll be able to uh, essentially run uh, many uh, tests uh, on, uh, on social apps or and also uh, potentially help out friends who are uh, working on social apps. I know uh, two different ones as well, too. Very and now, cool. Awesome. And, uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead, keep going. Uh, so now after the pivot, uh, we're setting up a hedge fund um, and we're focusing on the thesis that I originally wrote back in, 20, uh, back in 2015 when I was 17 years old. And uh, we're also focusing on uh, hedging with macroeconomic uh, cycles. Very cool. I'm excited to kind of dive into it a little bit. Um, but as we do, I always like to kind of continue to set the stage for for the audience just to get because, you know, we talk to so many different business owners and different entrepreneurs and kind of getting a sense of, you know, where they're at in their business journey. Um, so there's there's kind of kind of two pieces that I'm curious on for for your uh, your journey specifically. First one is for kind of for Pearl Tech Incorporated. Um, Co-founder, mm -hmm. single founder, did you like, do you have additional business partners with you or are you doing this completely on your own? Um, kind of what, what, what that, what does that part of the journey look like for you? Yeah. So I have, a, I do have a team member. Uh, his name is Mohammed. I've worked with him in the past. I worked with him during the, uh, my first startup and then also during the, um, during the, uh, the previous one as well too. So, uh, yeah, uh, there's two of us, but we're also looking to expand the team as well to bring in a third person. Cool. Um, so in, in like the, the life cycle, are you still straight up in startup phase where we're uh, potentially not, I guess, easiest question is, um, are we at revenue yet? We still kind of pre-revenue kind of building, building out the, the, the platform and everything 
at this point. Uh, where, where are you at in the overall journey of kind of the, the business growth and cycle? So in terms of the, um, the fund itself, the fund itself is being set up, uh, going through all the legal processes and everything. Uh, but with my personal track record, uh, the thesis has already proven revenue and it's proven 31% annualized um, over the uh, over four years. So uh, uh, but that's, of course, with my uh, with my own personal one. Now the fund is being set up uh, to essentially execute the thesis. Very cool. Uh, so what is, what does your role look like as as you kind of get all everything off the ground and starting to roll? Um, you know what I always like to ask the general question for most you know entrepreneurs: How many different hats do you have to wear in the business today? You know, there's you know, between marketing, sales, finance, operations, kind of HR team, IT, like all the stuff that could be right. Uh, which hats are you currently wearing, or where are you spending most of your time, even uh, with regards to kind of roles within the business? Yeah, so the most of my time that I spend is uh, currently fundraising. Um, so, uh, that's, that's a key role, but of course, uh, I'm also really spending a lot of time doing, uh, investment analysis and macroeconomic, uh, analysis. Um, and, uh, I do a little bit of coding myself too, but my team member, uh, Mohammed, he will, he's essentially, uh, leading the, uh, the development structure. Cool. And, uh, as you continue to grow, just knowing different skill sets, things like that, um, do you anticipate that you'll continue on the path and, and really kind of be CEO and run the actual business itself? Or will you be bringing on team members that have a little bit more experience potentially in the actual running of the business side of things? Yeah. So, um, I still see myself as being, uh, uh the CEO and, uh, continuously fundraising and making, uh, on those investment, um, analysis, but we definitely will be bringing along other, uh, investment, anal um, analysts. Uh, other people who will um, uh, look at the macroeconomic terms to expand the team. It's always good to to have other people's point of views, and uh, uh, but we are also um, we don't want to be a traditional hedge fund where we're focusing on just uh, financial uh, analysts. We're really looking for uh, software engineers. We're really looking for uh, uh, AI engineers. We're looking for uh, mathematicians. Um, so we don't really want to go into that, that traditional base since we believe that um, everything is uh, quantifiable and um, that even uh, things like news is uh, quantifiable to an extent when you use artificial intelligence uh, for our model. So we're, we're going uh, that route more than the traditional hedge fund route. Very cool. So let's dive into that, that part of the business a little bit. I, I'm always curious. I like to ask the general question of like, who does your business serve? Um, you know, if I'm in the audience and uh, like, how would I know that either I'm a good fit or I might know somebody that I should connect y'all with or something like that to, uh, to be a part of in, and work with y'all down the road? Um, how, it, how would you kind of articulate that to, to the audience? Yeah. So uh, the people that we're targeting originally for the, uh, initially for the fund is uh, high net worth individuals. Uh, we're looking at family offices. Um, we're also looking at private equities. Um, in the long term, we'll be going into uh, different uh, uh, larger institutions. It could be endowments, pensions, things like that. Uh, but in the further long term, we really want to uh, essentially uh, not just make money for already uh, people who are already rich, but also make money for people who um, want to invest. Um, who uh, so the general population. But that's further down the line. Okay, very cool. So high net worth, uh, kind of established offices, things like that is kind of the, the primary target to begin with. Yeah. Um, what is what does that look like uh, in, in terms of starting kind of the, the, the marketing and, and getting you know, the word out about what y'all do? Um, kind of what's the what's the plan there? Or kind of what have you started to do at this point to, to get in front of the, the target market that that you know will be best fit for for this business? Absolutely. So uh, since I've been in the startup world, I'm leveraging all my connections right now. Every connection that I made, um, I'm leveraging. Uh, so even if the, the people who I'm connected to are not specifically in the hedge fund world or uh, asset management fund world, I always ask them for introductions to uh, different fan man fund managers. And uh, people are, uh, a lot of the times when you ask, they're very happy to introduce. Uh, but aside from already uh, my the network that I already have, um, We'll be writing different things like blogs, uh, blogs on um, our thesis on what we believe uh, the the current market environment is going to look like. So we have a lot of a uh, SEO content as well as uh, social media content, and of course, um, uh, outreaching. Uh, I'll be going to the those private equity uh, firms, uh, talking to them, um, uh, even cold outreaching as well too. So that's the uh, the uh, the essential uh, initial go to market for that. Beautiful. 
Uh, so I'm always curious, you know, when you look at your kind of journey so far, you know, um, lead up into the, the previous experience into this business, starting to grow it and build it and things like that. Um, what have been kind of the, the top lessons that you've learned along the way in terms of kind of understanding business and, and now being in the startup world? Uh, top lessons. Uh, I feel like, uh, I think one of the most important things, uh, for uh, a company is really picking a good team, picking, uh, uh, people who you trust, people who are, um, who, uh, have your, uh, and your benefit in their, in their mind and, uh, and vice versa. Um, I think that's one of the, the core things. Um, and I think, uh, when you can work with people who have a, a strong, um, who believe in your vision as well too, and who, um, you can really work well with, I think that's one of the biggest lessons that, uh, that I've learned. Uh, I think that's very important. Um, I think one of the other things too, is that you're never really going to be ready, um, I've invested a lot of my own money. I've uh, there are always struggles uh, when it comes to when it comes to this, and uh, I think one of the biggest things is to essentially be able to, um, uh, to to be able to like really just push through it. Like there are always tough times, but I feel like if you don't quit, then um, there's uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, so I, I think those are my 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 biggest things. But yeah, very cool. Uh, well, let's let's shift over to a few rapid fire questions. I always love to kind of pull out just a, a, a few extra you know, wisdom nuggets for the audience, things like that. So you can kind of take it, use it. And, 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 and you know, especially as we go into the weekend, that sort of thing. So um, when you look at kind of your journey overall, you know, starting um, you know, a number of years ago, you know, getting into kind of the, the tech side and then finance and everything else. Um, what would you say for you has been kind of your key to success? Any kind of traits, routines, things that that you can kind of point to in your own life that um, you feel contributes to your ability to be successful? Uh, I think it's really become uh, just being obsessed, honestly. Um, every single time I've looked into companies and to, to invest at, every single time I've looked into different economic cycles, uh, just being obsessed, uh, reading books, reading about the company, um, really going down into, um, uh, yeah, really into that. Um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll give some examples. When I originally started um, executing the thesis. Uh, I was looking into okay, what are the things that have high probability of coming about in the future? Um, what what did I write when I was uh, seventeen years old? It's like okay, I predicted um, we'll have self driving cars, we'll have AGI, we'll have um, I believe we'll live in a world where we'll have an energy surplus um, given renewable energy and given so much energy the sun has. Um, and then I started really becoming obsessed with finding companies that do that. Uh, which ones have competitive advantage? Which ones have? Uh, which ones are early? Which ones are um, are people um, talking bad about right now that I believe uh, people are not really looking into? Um, so I made uh, I just became obsessed with uh, with all of that as and as well as really just learning, and uh, I think that essentially allowed me to make um, really good investment decisions and um, over the long term, which has achieved um, a great returns so far. Um, so far. Uh, our returns are 31% annualized. The average Wall Street fund is a hedge fund over the last five years is 7.5%. So I think we're doing pretty, uh, pretty well given the, uh, the obsession. I think that's one of the things. Cool. How about advice? If you could give other entrepreneurs advice, uh, just leave them with just one piece. I'm sure you could give more than one, but if you could just leave them one piece of advice today, what would you want to give them? Uh, never quit. There's always uh, a light at the end of the tunnel. I think you should, if you, if you truly believe in yourself, if you truly believe in your vision, um, don't don't quit because uh, even if you do struggle for the next 10 years, 20 years, uh, at the end of the day, um, you'll still be working, uh, but you'll be working on something that you really enjoy. And maybe when you turn 65, you'll retire, but, um, and let's say it doesn't work out, uh, you'll, you would have ended up working on something that you enjoyed versus something that you didn't. So I feel like just pushing through it and never quitting is, uh, is the biggest, uh, advice. Beautiful book recommendations, uh, especially being obsessed in reading and learning a whole bunch of different stuff. Any book recommendations you would give to the audience? Uh, they can be business or not business, anything that, that, that you feel kind of would be fun at this point, but any recommendations you give to the audience with regards to a book to read? Uh, so I think one of my, uh, one of my favorite books is, uh, the future of humanity by Michio Kaku. That's really what set things uh, set things up for me. Um, it really goes down into uh, uh, like the near term and the further long term, how we can uh, 
uh, expand into the solar system and um, uh, really improve humanity. And uh, I, that really caught my attention. And I really like that book. It, Very you know, cool. I love it. I get to add another one on my list. I don't think I've, I don't think I've read that one yet. So you get mm -hmm. to put it on the list. That's awesome. Um, so before we get to the final question of the day that I always like to kind of wrap up these conversations on, um, for those in the audience, if they want to learn more about you, if they want to kind of follow the the work that you're doing, um, especially as you continue to grow and and, and move forward with with the business, uh, where can we advise them to go for more information and and make sure that they're all connected? Yeah. So um, you can learn more at pearltech.xyz. Um, and you can also uh, follow my LinkedIn as well too. I'll be posting a lot of uh, uh, a lot of our thesis, a lot of our microeconomic cycles, and yeah, I think that's that'd be a good way to learn more. Excellent. Well, I will make sure to put both of those in the video description below. So for those that are watching, make sure you take a moment as soon as we wrap up the conversation here, go click the links, check everything out, um, connect with Leander here on uh, LinkedIn, make sure you send him a message, say, hey, saw you on the business spotlight, great conversation. I uh, just wanted to connect all that kind of stuff because that's that's one of the, my favorite things uh, about this particular series is, you know, get there, it actually make some connections, things like that. So I highly encourage you all to do so. Uh, but Leandro, as we finish off, I always like to end with this one final question, which is simply, what is most inspiring to you today? Uh, inspiring, I think, I think there's a lot of problems in the world. And I think um, uh, just my vision to solve those problems, to help people out, to be able to, um, like, of course, as I mentioned before, not, not just make a well, wealthy people already wealthy, but uh, the general population wealthy. Um, so uh, I'm really inspired by by helping people out. Um, I think one of the most important things in the world are uh, the people that we that we meet, the people that are are, are out there. Um, and what really inspires me is just um, just just bringing as much light as I can uh, to that. That's that's really uh, what wakes me up uh, every day. It's very cool. Well, Leandro, I want to say thank you again for taking the time. I greatly appreciate it. It's been fun to kind of hear, you know, where you're at in your journey and excited to see where things go over the next couple of years. Um, so thank you again for taking the time and, and being here a part of the, the Business Spotlight today. Thank you as well. Appreciate it.